All right, next talk will be given jointly by Gene Kopp and John Wilcher Gordon, and it's called Robust Coin Flipping. Hi, my name is John. This is my co-author, Gene. Our, our talk is about securely outsourcing the generation of random data, in particular, the generation of a single biased coin flip. As is customary, the story begins with Alice. Alice wants to generate a random bit with bias alpha. She has several random oracles. Here's how they work. Whoa. That's not how, right, that's not how they work. <laughs> this is how they work. Alice may adjust the knobs to put any probability space in. When she presses the button, the probability space will choose one of the choices. Unfortunately, some number of the random oracles may be faulty and Alice doesn't know which ones. In an equivalent, but more realistic scenario, Alice is stuck in the jungle with nothing but a flamingo and a cell phone. In order to generate a random bit, Alice calls up three distant random oracles located in far off locations. She specifies probability spaces over the phone and asks the flamingo to remember the outputs. Once again, some number of the oracles may be faulty, or even controlled by enemies of Alice acting in concert against her. <laughs> Here is a table of all the cases. The number of reliable oracles, denoted R, gives the row, and the number of unreliable oracles, Q, the column. We are interested in the set of biases that Alice can generate in each situation. If there are no honest parties to be relied on, Alice can simulate only the always heads coin and the always tails coin. On the other hand, if everyone's honest, Anyone may be trusted to produce the bit with any bias. If the honest parties do not form a majority, we've shown that rational and only rational probabilities are possible. If there is an honest majority, all algebraic number biases may be generated as well, and nothing else. Here's the same thing in words as a theorem. <laughs> but Gene, why would anyone want to choose a bit with irrational bias? Well. I'm glad you asked. In fact, algebraic probabilities arise naturally. For example, in economics, for instance, in the implementation of mixed strategies and multiplayer games. But why can't we just approximate alpha by rational numbers? Well, Alice being in the jungle with nothing but a flamingo and a cell phone, her computational powers may be limited, whereas the, the laboratories she calls may have more power at their disposal. Our solution provides a constant time algorithm for Alice. Here is an example of a strategy Alice might employ to simulate a fair nickel in the presence of one dishonest party. She asks one party to roll a fair die and another to flip a fair penny. She then assigns a value of heads or tails to each possible combination. Let's see what happens if the dice is fair but the penny is not. Computing the entrywise multi uh, matrix dot product, we see that the simulated nickel is nonetheless fair. <laughs> Similarly, if the pe penny is reliable, we have a similar situation. Here's the same construction, but shown as a statue. Notice that even as the lengths change along any one dimension, the total mass, mass of the statue is unaffected. Any rational bias is easy to construct using finite groups. Alice asks for a uniform group element from each party and multiplies them. If the product lies in a specified set, she returns heads, otherwise tails. If we have, say, one dishonest party, we must be prepared to handle any probability space that party throws our way. The honest party spaces must well, even things out. It comes down to multilinear algebra. In this notation, A represents the hypermatrix you get by replacing uh, nickel, nickel heads with ones and nickel tails with zeros. This setup is the beginning of an al algebraic geometry proof that alpha must be an algebraic number. In the constructive direction, the most difficult irrational number to approximate by rationals is the golden ratio. Nevertheless, here's an explicit algorithm for outsourcing its simulation, running in constant time with constant communication cost. Here's the same geometric demonstration of the algorithm. Not that, but that one. 
Notice that once again, if you change the lengths in any one dimension, the total mass of the statue is unaffected. Thank you. Thank you.